everyone, welcome to CRT's Cozy Corner Chapter Book Edition, where we are going to be reading another two chapters from Wizard of Oz by L. Frank Baum. We will be reading chapter 18 and 19, so if you'd like to follow along, go ahead and click the link in the description for the ebook, or grab your favorite copy, and meet us back here for two chapters. Chapter 18, Away to the South. Dorothy wept bitterly at the passing of her hope to get home to Kansas again. But when she thought it all over, she was glad she had not gone up in a balloon. And she also felt sorry at losing Oz, and so did her companions. The tin woodman came to her and said, Truly, I should be ungrateful if I failed to mourn for the man who gave me the lovely heart. I should like to cry a little bit because Oz is gone. If you will kindly wipe away my tears so that I shall not rest. With pleasure, she answered, and brought a towel at once. Then the tin woodman wept for several minutes, and she watched the tears carefully and wiped them away with the towel. When he had finished, he thanked her kindly and oiled himself thoroughly with his jeweled oil can to guard against mishap. The scarecrow was now the ruler of the Emerald City, and although he was not a wizard, the people were proud of him. For, they said, there is not another in the city in all the world that is ruled by a soft man. And so far as they knew, they were quite right. The morning after the balloon had gone up with Oz, the four travelers met in the throne room and talked matters over. The scarecrow sat in the big throne and the others stood respectfully before him. We are not so unlucky, said the new ruler, for this palace and the Emerald City belong to us and we can do just as we please. When I remember that a short time ago, I was up on a pole in a farmer's cornfield and that now I am the ruler of this beautiful city. I am quite satisfied with my lot. I also, said the tin woodman, am well pleased with my heart. And really, that was the only thing I wished in all the world. For my part, I am content in knowing I am as brave as any beast that ever lived, if not braver, said the lion modestly. If Dorothy only be contented to live in the Emerald City, continued the Scarecrow, we might all be happy together. But I don't want to live here, cried Dorothy. I want to go to Kansas, live with Aunt Anne and Uncle Henry. Well then, what can be done? inquired the woodman. The Scarecrow decided to think, and he thought so hard that the pins and needles began to stick out of his brain. Finally, he said, why not call the winged monkeys and ask them to carry you over the desert? I never thought of that, said Dorothy joyfully. It's just the thing. I'll go out at once for the golden cap. When she had brought it into the throne room, she spoke the magic words, and soon the band of winged monkeys flew in through the open window and stood beside her. This is the second time you have called for us, said the monkey king, bowing before the little girl. What do you wish? I want you to fly with me to Kansas, said Dorothy. But the monkey king shook his head. That cannot be done, he said. We belong to this country alone and cannot leave. There has never been a winged monkey in Kansas yet, and I suppose there never will be, for they don't belong there. We shall be glad to serve you in any way in our power, but we cannot cross the desert. Goodbye. And with another bow, the monkey king spread his wings and flew away through the window, followed by all his band. Dorothy was almost ready to cry with disappointment. I have wasted the charm of the golden cap to no purpose, she said, for the winged monkeys cannot help me. It is certainly too bad, said the tender-hearted woodman. The scarecrow was thinking again, and his head bulged out so horribly that Dorothy feared it would burst. Let us call in the soldier with the green whiskers, he said, and ask his advice. So the soldier was summoned and entered the throne room timidly, for while Oz was alive, he was never allowed to come further than the door. This little girl, said the scarecrow to the soldier, wishes to cross the desert. How can she do so? I cannot tell, answered the soldier, for nobody has ever crossed the desert unless it is Oz himself. Is there no one who can help me? asked Dorothy earnestly. Glinda might, he suggested. Who is Glinda? 
inquired the Scarecrow. The Witch of the South. She is the most powerful of all the witches and rules over the quadlings. Besides, her castle stands on the edge of the desert, so she may know a way to cross it. Glinda. Glinda is a good witch, isn't she? asked the child. The quadlings think she is very good, said the shoulder, soldier, and she is kind to everyone. I have heard that Glinda is a beautiful woman who knows how to keep young in spite of many years she has lived. How can I get to her castle? asked Dorothy. The road is straight to the south, he answered, but it is said to be full of dangers to travelers. There are wild beasts in the wood and a race of queer men who do not like strangers to cross their country. For this reason, none of the quadlings ever come to the Emerald City. The soldier then left them, and the scarecrow said, It seems, in spite of dangers, that the best thing Dorothy can do is to travel to the land of the South and ask Linda to help her. For, of course, if Dorothy stays here, she will never get back to Kansas again. You must have been thinking again, remarked the tin woodman. I have, said the scarecrow. I shall go with Dorothy, declared the lion, for I am tired of your city and long for the woods in the country again. I am really a wild beast, you know. Besides, Dorothy will need someone to protect her. That is true, agreed the woodman. My axe may be of service to her, so I will also go with her to the land of the south. When shall we start? asked the scarecrow. Are you going? they asked in surprise. Certainly. If it wasn't for Dorothy, I should have never had brains. She lifted me from the pole in the cornfield and brought me to the Emerald City. So my good luck is all due to her, and I shall never leave her until she starts back to Kansas for good and all. Thank you, said Dorothy gratefully. You are all very kind to me, but I should like to start as soon as possible. We shall go tomorrow morning returned the scarecrow. So now let us all get ready, for it will be a long journey. Chapter 19. Attacked by the Fighting Trees. The next morning, Dorothy kissed the pretty green girl goodbye, and they all shook hands with the soldier with the green whiskers who had walked them with them as far as the gate. When the guardian of the gate saw them again, he wondered greatly that they could leave the beautiful city to get into new trouble. But he at once unlocked their spectacles, which he put back into the green box and gave them many good wishes to carry with them. You are now our ruler, he said to the scarecrow, so you must come back to us as soon as possible. I certainly shall if I am able, said the scarecrow, but I must help Dorothy to get home first. As Dorothy bade the good-natured guardian a last farewell, she said, I have been very kindly treated in your lovely city, and everyone has been good to me. I cannot tell you how grateful I am. Don't try, my dear, he answered. We should like to keep you with us, but if it is your wish to return to Kansas, I hope you will find a way. He then opened the gate to the outer wall, and they walked forth and started upon their journey. The sun shone brightly as our friends turned their faces towards the land of the south. They were all in the best spirits and laughed and chatted together. Dorothy was once more filled with hope of getting home, and the scarecrow and the tin woodman were glad to be of use to her. As for the lion, he sniffed the fresh air with delight and whisked his tail from side to side in pure joy at being in the country again, while Toto ran around them and chased the moths and butterflies, barking merrily all the time. "'City life does not agree with me at all,' remarked the lion, as they walked along at a brisk pace. "'I have lost much flesh since I lived there, and now I am anxious for a chance to show the other beasts how courageous I have grown.' They now turned and took a last look at the Emerald City. All they could see was a mass of towers and steeples behind the green walls, and high up above everything the spires and dome of the Palace of Oz. Oz was not such a bad wizard after all, said the tin woodman, as he felt his heart rattling around in his breast. He knew how to give me brains, and very good brains, too, said the scarecrow. If Oz had taken a dose of the same courage he gave me, 
added the lion. He would have been a brave man. Dorothy said nothing. Oz had kept, not kept the promise he made to her, but he had done his best, so she forgave him. As he said, he was a good man, even if he was a bad wizard. The first day's journey was through the green fields and bright flowers that stretched about the Emerald City on every side. They slept that night on the grass with nothing but the stars over them. They rested very well indeed. In the morning, they traveled on until they came to a thick wood. There was no way of going round it, for it seemed to extend to the right and the left as far as they could see. And besides, they did not dare change the direction of their journey for fear of getting lost. So they looked for a place where it would be easiest to get into the forest. The scarecrow, who was in the lead, finally discovered a big tree with such wide spreading branches that there was room for the party to pass underneath. So he walked forward to the tree, but just as he came under the first branches, they bent down and twined around him. And the next minute he was raised from the ground and flung head along among his fellow travelers. This did not hurt the scarecrow, but it surprised him and he looked rather dizzy. When Dorothy picked him up, here is another space between the trees, called the lion. Let me try it first, said the scarecrow, for it does not hurt me to get thrown about. He walked up to another tree as he spoke, but its branches immediately seized him and tossed him back again. This is strange, exclaimed Dorothy. What shall we do? The trees seem to have made up their minds to fight us and stop our journey, remarked the lion. I believe I will try it myself, said the woodman, and shouldering his axe, he marched up to the first tree that had handled the scarecrow so roughly. When a big branch bent down to seize him, the woodman chopped it at so fiercely that he cut it in two. At once, the tree began shaking all of its branches as if in pain, and the tin woodman passed safely under it. Come on, he shouted to the others, be quick! They all ran forward and passed under the tree without injury, except Toto, who was caught by a small branch and shaken until he howled. But the woodman promptly chopped off the branch and set the little dog free. The other trees of the forest did nothing to keep them back, so they made up their minds that only the first row of trees could bend down their branches, and that probably these were the policemen of the forest, and given this wonderful power in order to keep strangers out of it. The four travelers walked with ease through the trees until they came to the further edge of the woods. Then, to their surprise, they found before them a high wall which seemed to be made of white china. It was smooth like the surface of a dish and higher than their heads. What shall we do now? asked Dorothy. I will make a ladder, said the tin man, for we certainly must climb over the wall. Thanks so much for joining us at CRT's Cozy Corner. See you next time.